Um, so, yeah, my name is Samir Deldi. I'm a Microsoft MVP specializing in uh, power apps and business applications. Um, my background is purely on Microsoft technologies. I started my career with um, C Sharp, SQL Server, moved to SharePoint, uh, worked with pretty much all versions of SharePoint uh, since WSS3, and uh, been specializing in power apps. Um, since early um, days, uh, 2017, uh, I think. Uh, I try to blog on a regular basis. Uh, you, can, you can reach me out on LinkedIn or X, uh, Twitter, or you can check check out my uh, my blog. Right, so today we look at um, a very specific um, uh, use case. Um, we're going to look at the uh, the challenge of uh, frequently asked questions in, in the IT services or IT department, and we will look at how we can turn that uh, frequently asked questions into more into smart um, um, interface using Copilot uh, Copilot uh, agents. Um, then we're going to take that Copilot agent and in, in, in Power Apps. It can be any uh, any application, a Canvas app or model-driven app, but we have a use case here where we're going to embed it in an existing Power Apps. And finally, we're going to take the whole thing and surface it in Microsoft Teams. The idea is to improve productivity and make sure that everything is available to our end users in one single place. And um, because they're spending most of their time in Teams, this is why we have Rocker and we surface everything uh, within, within Teams. So the the challenge of frequently asked questions uh, within the IT uh, the IT world. So a few years uh, ago, having frequently asked question page in in SharePoint would have been something nice and exciting and shiny. That's not the case anymore. Um, the idea is um, that the, the IT teams will will maintain list of frequently asked questions in the hope that um, end users will consult that list, have a look before sending their their queries, and probably self serve uh, and find resolution to their queries or uh, request before reaching out to. Uh, to IT services. So that can be either something in your intranet or um, in SharePoint or web page. Um, so let me switch to the demo here and uh, I will share my browser instead. So for this demo today, we have um, an example of frequently asked questions. This is a um, typical Excel document with a list of questions and some answers with links to uh, learn.microsoft and a couple of other resources. Um, the idea is that this will be turned into a Copilot uh, agent or chatbot. So I'm going to switch to Copilot Studio here and check my agents. I have I've already created the agent, so I'm going to take you through how this uh, has been uh, has been uh, created. And uh, the most important thing is that we're going to be using the the Excel document as a knowledge source of generative AI for this um, agent, and uh, expected that the um, the agent will will try to find answers from the content in the the Excel document. So we have an agent here with an icon description. Um, if, we, if we go and look at knowledge, you see the Excel document here. And uh, from here, I can test my uh, my uh, my chatbot here. Say, so, okay, um, what is memes or something like? How can I create SharePoint site? And basically, yeah, typical testing of a uh, Copilot agent. Um, Hopefully it's going to come back with some answers. Fair enough. I'm happy with the agent. I want to publish it and make it available through the uh, the standard channels. You can publish this agent to Microsoft Teams, um, a web application, uh, mobile app, Facebook, Skype, maybe. Why not? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the agent. Now I want to integrate my agent into an existing Power Apps application. And as I said, uh, it doesn't have to be this application. It can be any any app. But the fact that we can embed the, the Copilot agent in, in an existing app uh, makes life much easier. So the users, this is a service desk application. The users can come here in order to submit a ticket and they can leverage the, the chatbot uh, to reduce the, the load and number of tickets that um, IT will receive. So in, in this application, we have two sides of the, of the app. So we have the backend or the admin team where they can look at the tickets that have been received. They can interact with the tickets. Um, they can yeah, upload files, attachments, add nodes, look at the timeline and resolve them. We have also the end user side where as an, as an employee, I can come here, I have a problem, I create a new ticket. Let's say I have a problem with the uh, or a request regarding SharePoint. I can come here and say, I want a SharePoint site with external sharing capabilities. All right. Um, you can have some attachments here and uh, basically that's how you submit a ticket, right? In this interface, you see that we have uh, also access to the frequently asked, asked questions and the chatbot. So I'm going to show you both both uh, sides of the um, uh, of, of how we can um, work with the frequently asked, asked questions. So traditionally, you would have something like this. So you have uh, I've grouped those questions by category. So you can say, okay, I have a question about uh, SharePoint and I want to know about external data sources. You click on the question, or you can have like an accordion. Can I integrate SharePoint with external source? Yes. 
So this is the traditional way of working. It's not exciting. It's a bit outdated, and um, yeah, it's not really engaging with the, with the end user. So the same chatbot that we've we've seen can be included as control in my power app. So we can interrogate, uh, interrogate the the agent directly from here, or we can have um, in the header I created a component uh, header which which brings the uh, copilot uh, copilot agent. So if I go as an admin, uh, yeah. So when I click on this uh, on this uh, icon on the header, it brings this chatbot here component. This is a custom component uh, we've created. Uh, I will show you how that has been done. But same thing, the same copilot agent has been embedded in this control, and it has this nice looking web 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 style, I would say, uh, where you can expand, uh, close this uh, component. Now, how has all this been created? I'm going to switch back to the to the, my components. Uh, first thing we're going to look at uh, the header. So we have an icon here. There is nothing to fancy about this. Uh, it's an image and, uh, and a button. So when when we click on that uh, button, we just set a variable virtual copilot to be true. It's just a boolean which says true or false, right? And this variable will drive the, um, the appearance of this of the component in my interface. You will notice that the component has access to the app scope. So it's a global variable. We can update it from from the component. It's fine. Um, if I go back to one of the screens. Click on this icon. It brings this this component, and the visibility of this component is driven by this variable. Now we have we have uh, the actual component where we have the uh, copilot agent running, and uh, basically this is uh, a container, right? A vertical container with few things. Uh, so we have an image, uh, HTML uh, control behind which displays that uh, gradient background, and you have two uh, two buttons here. So this one will close the, com the component by just turning the uh, the variable to, to false. Um, this switch between two predefined sizes. So we have another variable which is copilot size. It's either large or normal, and it toggles between um, these two sizes. And more importantly, we have the chatbot component. So that's the place where. Uh, let me show you how we enable that first. So if you go to your app uh, settings and you go to features or updates, search for Copilot. Uh, it's still in preview. It has been in preview for a while, but this is the feature that you need to uh, to turn on uh, to be able to have the, the chatbot component. Once you have that, just, just simple drag and drop in the component uh, in the component or the screen, and you can connect it to uh, an existing uh, chatbot. So in my case, it's the one that we've, we've seen earlier, um, this one. Uh, right. So let's see, uh, as an, um, an IT technician, for example, I receive this, this ticket and the, the user wants to create SharePoint site with external sharing. Let's say I have no clue about SharePoint and I want to know how to do that. So I'm going to call Copilot here and say, how can I make SharePoint? What would have been nice is to pull the um, the query content and automatically pass that to go copilot, but that's probably the next version. <clears throat> so here it gives me step by step how to do that. So first go to SharePoint permissions, click active sites, enable external sharing, blah, blah, blah. And you have a link to where it found uh, the reference. So if you want to learn more, you go to learn.microsoft.com and you have step by step how you configure that. So we can follow that quickly. Uh, let's say create the site, go to the resolution. Uh, down, here's your URL, save, and that's it. So it helps both the end user and the IT technicians to leverage the content from um, uh, the frequent asked questions. You can also integrate other sources. It doesn't have to be just the, uh, the um, uh, this Excel document that I showed you. So you can connect to other um, um, reputable URLs, uh, mainly things like uh, learn.microsoft.com and so on. Now, we've integrated Copilot in um, in the power up, uh, we have generative AI. We have that content uh, surfaced by Copilot. That's all nice. But we know that our users spend most of their time in within Teams, and there is no better way than reaching them uh, where they where they spend most of their time. So we avoid context switching. We improve productivity and uh, make sure that everything runs in, in in the same environment in the place where they are comfortable. So what I've done here is that I took that um, um, power up and created a wrapper for that within Teams. Uh, basically, the same application runs within Teams. You can access Copilot directly from uh, from the same the same app, and you don't have to switch between uh, ch uh, chats and agent and, uh, and the app and so on. So the, most of the time, if if your end users are trying to reach to, uh, to IT services, they're already frustrated. Uh, there's a problem, they can do their work. So the last thing you would want is to expect them to switch between different tabs and different applications. 
So how was this this uh, Teams application built? I used out of the box developer portal, um, and um, you don't need any any developer skills here or anything like that. So you go to your apps, create a new app. We already have an app here, so let me show you how this looks. Um, basically, there are different things you need to provide here about your um, uh, uh, app information, things like icon, title, uh, description, and so on. But more, most importantly, a Teams app is just a uh, it's just a manifest. It's a JSON file with, which doesn't contain any um, uh, any any data or anything like that. You, you, it points to different different places. So a Teams app can be uh, can have a bot a connector, can be a message extension, uh, can be a Teams tier scene or things like that. But more importantly, you can have a personal app, and a personal app is basically a tab like the ones you see here on the top. So I created one personal app, and all it does it, it points to to my uh, Power App URL. So the, the thing, um, the, probably the one tip here is that I added at the end of the URL, hide map bar uh, equals true. So that will uh, we get rid of the uh, Power Apps header on the top. It looks like it's more native to Teams. It, it, everything runs in um, runs smoothly within within Teams. So um, this is just because I'm running on development environment, but basically the apps looks like it's fully integrated within Teams, and that's how you can leverage both uh, Copa well. Copilot, Power Platform, Teams, and create a fully functioning solution, which streamline the um, IT service uh, work and kind of yeah create a nice, easy, and uh, simple interface for that. Uh, right on time. Back to you, David. Thank you so much, guys.